Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, I want to share a story that brings tears to my eyes. The prophet Noah, may peace be upon him. He was the prophet who called his people for years on end, years on end. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِهِنَ عَامًا Nuh alayhi salam, Allah says, we sent him to his people. He lived with them for a thousand years, less fifty, nine hundred and fifty years. He lived for much longer, but with his people, calling them to Allah, nine hundred and fifty solid years. He reminded them, come to Allah. Imagine a Nabi of Allah. A messenger of Allah, 950 years. Do you know how many people accepted his message? The maximum number ever mentioned is 80. And the minimum is 11. So somewhere between 11 and 80 people. In how many years? In nine and a half centuries. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him thereafter, and this is the point I want to raise, that every time you call them, and everyone who has had a reminder, we wrote it down. We know about it. Your ears have heard so many reminders about salah, about dressing, about abandoning zina and adultery, about abandoning sin, about abandoning pornography and whatever other sins there are, about abandoning all of them and engaging in that which will please Allah, reading the Quran, going out to learn lessons, enrolling in some school and trying to learn more about Allah. You've heard it a million and one times, so many times. Every single time you heard it, you need to know ma asabaka lam That which got to you was never meant to miss you. Allah knows he planned for it to get to you. And this is why the angels of death, or should I say the angels, the gatekeepers of hell will ask all those who will be doomed to hell as they're entering hell. What's the question? Towards the end of Surah Zumar, Allah makes mention of how the people of hellfire will be entering hellfire in groups. And as they're entering, the angels will ask them a question. Didn't Allah send you reminders and messengers telling you, warning you about this day, warning you about hellfire, reminding you that this is what the outcome of those who have been disobedience will, uh, disobedient will be. And the people will say, yeah, they did. But now it's too late. Which means Allah knows reminders have come to you and to me. Messengers and messages from the messengers and messengers of the messenger have come and they've spoken to us and they've told us we've had reminders in the form of books, in the form of the Quran and the Sunnah, in the form of lectures, in the form of CDs, in the form of radio programs, in the form of television programs, in the form of the internet, in the form of whatever other messages you might have got on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. We're talking of the correct usage of these items, not the wrong usage. You know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and so many other things, they are just like a knife. You can either use it for something good, or you can use it to commit murder, to do something bad. It's up to you how you use it, subhanAllah. But remember, every time you see a message, you will be questioned about it. You will be asked about it. Wallahi, there will come a day when you will be told, look, we sent you three and a half million messages. We don't want to be stuck to say, oh, I didn't take it seriously. Tick off your list. How many messages have you had? Start ticking today. How many messages do you have? You will tick off before you know it by the end of the year. If you are really conscious of it, you will have ticked off at least 20,000 reminders from Allah. Minimum. I promise you. Different types of reminders have come to you. But the thing is, look at Nuh alayhi salam. When he complains to Allah, Oh Allah, look at my people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what Nuh alayhi salatu was salam says, Rabbi inni da'awtu qawmi laylan wa nahara, falam yazidhum du'a'i illa firara. Surah Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the Prophet Noah, may peace be upon him. He calls out to his people. He called, he's telling Allah, oh Allah, I called out to my people day and night or night and day. And I call them openly. I call them in secret, but they are just going further and further away. How many of us hear a good Islamic message calling us towards Allah, going towards our own maker, and we are going further away. May Allah safeguard myself and yourselves.
So Allah tells Nuh alayhi salam when he complains, Allah says, you know what? O Noah, now, and this was 950 years later, now don't bother with them anymore. Don't bother with them anymore. None of those who have disbelieved will believe. The ones who have believed, that's it. The figure is closed. It's sealed. Now start preparing your ark. And the punishment is going to come to all of those who remain. So that is why when the ark was being built, no one was accepting Islam. They started laughing at him and they kept on saying, Ya Nuh, sirta najjaran ba'da an kunta nabiya. Oh no, you've now become a carpenter, but up to now you were a prophet of Allah. They were laughing and scoffing. So Allah says, don't worry. Don't even turn towards their scoffing. Not at all. Because their quota of reminders is finished. That's my point. I want to make mention of a verse of the Quran that always brings tears to my eyes. Allah says, If you turn away, we will replace you with others who will not be like you. Clear verse. So Allah is telling us, Ya ayyuhan nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. O people, you are the ones who are in desperate need of Allah. Allah is independent. He doesn't need you at all. So if you do not want to obey Allah's instruction, He will replace you with others who will obey His instructions. And then who would have lost out? You, no one else. This is the message to us. And this is why I say, my sisters, if you don't want to cover, Allah doesn't lose anything. Another 10 will cover because of your uncovering. And if we don't want to stop listening to that, which is detrimental to the ears in terms of music and so on, it's not like Allah is going to be harmed by it. There will be others who will have stopped because of our non-stopping attitude. And we will have lost out. So remember, if we don't read Salah, there are others who will be reading Salah in great numbers, in a more beautiful way. We will be at loss, not, not Allah. Others would have gained. So don't miss the boat. We call ourselves Muslims. A Muslim is one who surrenders. Why should we not surrender then when we call ourselves surrenderers to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah make us steadfast. May he make us from those who realize and understand. Look at this. The people of Mecca were replaced by the people of Medina Munawwara. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may he grant us a lesson. The Prophet sallam, he was considerate, compassionate. He loved the people. He had so much of care for them. These were some of the qualities that we lack today. And yes, one might argue these are prophetic, but no, the level upon which they are may be prophetic, but the teaching is for us all. It's quite simple. So I hope that we too, you know, become people who are considerate of others. We have hope in others and we are hard on ourselves. It's a sacrifice to be a person who's loved. You need to be a person who sacrifices. You need to be a person who tries. You need to be a person who's upright, earning the closeness of Allah. I can give you one hadith that brings tears to the eyes. Listen to it. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan nada Jibreel. Fayaqulu ya Jibreel, Inna Allah yuhibbu fulanan fa ahibba. When Allah loves a person, Allah calls Jibreel. And Allah says, Oh Jibreel, Allah loves so and so. So you too love him. So Jibreel begins to love that person and he calls out to the rest of the angels, O oh angels, Allah loves such and such a person on earth. You all love them too. So they begin to love them and they descend upon the earth with the love of that particular person. Wow, subhanallah. And this is why we say, Ya Allah, you know, we say, may Allah love us. Oh Allah, love me. I love you. Subhanallah. We say, I love Allah, I love Allah. But we ask Allah, Oh Allah, you love me too. Because if Allah loves you, there's nothing more you need.
And the love of Allah does not mean you're going to have everything thrown at your feet. No, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the most beloved to Allah. What did he have? He went through more difficult times than any one of us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us with a few of these qualities. The Prophet وسلم, never raised his voice in a derogatory manner, you know, shouting, screaming. He was never vulgar. He, he was never ever saying hurtful things with us we are vulgar and hurtful every single day and then we're wondering why is it that no one likes us no one loves us and so on you want to earn this go and study the seerah go and study the sunnah take a look at the qualities when we say the way he spoke the words he used wallahi just to think for a moment this is what the prophet peace be upon him taught this is what he lived by he was upon the highest level of contentment ever where are we May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment and may Allah open our doors. Jazakumullah khair.